Hey there guys, it's Tina and I am back and I have another foundation demo review and wear test for you guys this time featuring the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation which says it stays all day and all night. I recently did a foundation review, wear test and demo with the Too Faced Born This Way Matte Foundation. I will link it over here so you can check it out. I changed the shade for this so I got the shade Mocha which is two shades deeper than the shade Caramel that I got and this has rosy undertones. <gasps> gasp gag but guess what this is a much better shade match for me and I actually tried this on in another video that I will also link over here which I think you guys should definitely check out I tried this on in the end of that video to show you how the shade looks on my skin and I think it is a much better match so in this video like I said we're gonna go over the airbrush flawless foundation from Charlotte Tilbury this is a new foundation that claims to be full coverage and matte which sounds right up my alley well not necessarily the full coverage because I'm more into like medium to full coverage like medium buildable coverage I don't need full coverage okay I don't layer that much makeup on. The point is, this is a matte finish, which Charlotte Tilbury has a magic foundation. She also has like a wonder light foundation that's very lightweight, they're very glowy and we know I'm oily, I don't need a glowy foundation. So when I saw this was matte, I was like, all right, let me try it out. And I asked you guys if you wanted me to keep doing these foundation videos because I know a lot of you guys use me as a shade reference for matching up your foundations. And especially nowadays when we're not really going in stores and swatching products for ourselves, I can be that reference for you guys. So I actually had to go and get another shade of this foundation as well. You will see that at the end of this video as well. But yeah, you're you're in for a treat because <sighs> things were not okay, okay? So we're gonna test this out. I'm gonna walk you through the details of the product. We're gonna go into the demonstration. I'm gonna do the wear test and then I'll do my final check-in and give you my final thoughts. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned and I will talk to you soon. All right guys, so as usual, we're starting off with a clean, freshly washed face. And I have a little bit of a pimple right here, so don't mind that, but I'll show you what my skin looks like before I go in with anything else so I must say my skin has been doing really well these past couple of weeks like my skin looks glowy on its own I don't have like too many breakouts I do have like one and two here or there I don't have a lot of texture I just have some enlarged pores around my t-zone area so right around my nose I have like larger pores and then I have hyperpigmentation around my mouth but that doesn't really bother me too much but overall I have pretty decent skin so this this foundation doesn't have a lot to tackle. Now I'm going to go in with my moisturizer and for this I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream Light. I do actually like the original Magic Cream and I wanted to try this out. It is very pricey. It doesn't have, mm, I guess it has the same scent as the original Magic Cream which just smells like a cream. This is a lighter version which is suitable for oily skin which is what I have. Even though with the Magic Cream I felt like it still did a pretty decent job at keeping my skin hydrated without feeling too greasy. But this one is meant to be a little bit lighter. I don't know that it feels lighter though because you can definitely feel the regular magic cream on your skin. It doesn't look greasy or anything but you feel it like you definitely feel like you're applying a moisturizer. This feels the same way. It doesn't feel any lighter to me actually. It's just more in a lotion form rather than a cream form which I guess I mean all right. <laughs> We'll see, but I do like the Magic Cream because like I said, it looks really great on my skin. It gives a boost of hydration and it adds a little bit of a glow. So we're gonna allow this to sit on our skin and absorb for a little bit while I fill in my brows and talk you through the product claims and description. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation retails for $44 and contains the usual one fluid ounce or 30 milliliters of product and it is available in 44 different shades. It says that it is a full coverage foundation with a flawless matte long lasting finish. This hybrid skincare foundation contains Charlotte Tilbury's magic matrix of ingredients including the groundbreaking magic Replexium to reduce the appearance of wrinkles. The hydrating lightweight formula is sweat proof, humidity proof, waterproof, and transfer resistant. 
For best results, it says to start by applying Charlotte's Magic Cream, which is sold separately to prime the skin. It is recommended for use on normal, dry, and combination skin. I'm interested to know why oily skin was excluded, considering that this is a matte full coverage foundation, but we'll find out. The highlighted ingredients that were mentioned are Replexium, which is a registered name, and this says it helps to reduce the appearance of wrinkles. Then we have Moss Tech Number no. 1, which is a trademark, and it says it helps thoroughly hydrate the skin. And Another trademark is air cool and it says it provides an immediate fresh feel on the skin so these three ingredients are used in trademarked or registered name which is really a clever way to hide what the actual ingredient is so it's proprietary no one else can copy the formulation but it also hides the actual ingredient formulation from us it also says that this product is vegan and cruelty free. There are also clinical results here. So it says tested on 311 men and women over eight weeks, 97% agree that skin feels cool after use and 95% agree that pores look reduced. When tested in 22 women, skin had limited exposure to everyday pollutants. I don't know how they would test that, but okay. And there's also a test that was done on 30 men and women that said their moisture levels were boosted to 216% in one hour. That is interesting. So we will test this out and see if it lives up to all these claims. I allowed the moisturizer to set and I think that actually feels pretty good. It definitely feels like I am wearing moisturizer. Compared to all the other moisturizers I've been using lately, which are gel creams, this is definitely one that I can feel on my skin, which I don't necessarily like, but we're just gonna go with it since we're using the Charlotte Tilbury foundation. For reference, the shade that I picked up is number 11, which is neutral, and it's for tan skin with neutral undertones. And this looks like a pretty great skin match for me, and there are quite a few shades after my shades, so I am happy to see that Charlotte Tilbury has expanded her range to include a lot more deep shades. So we're gonna go ahead and apply the foundation now and I'm just gonna grab a little bit on my little palette which is really just the top of a brush holder and you can see that it's more of a runny liquid foundation it's not a watery foundation at all but it definitely isn't a thicker liquid and I am going to apply this with a brush as I usually do this is a goat hair brush ooh that says neutral but why does it look so orange? Wow, a little of this is going a long way, so I definitely already see the full coverage. I don't need a ton of this product. Oh my god. Let me try to blend out the excess on that side because that was a little bit too much. And I dispensed a complete pump, and I don't think I need that much because I haven't even taken the majority of that product off the palette as yet. This looks orange, okay? <laughs> right away. This is looking a little bit too orange. How is this neutral? Is this really neutral? 11 neutral. No ma'am! This is not neutral at all. This is orange. But you know what? Let me just blend it in and let it sit on my skin and then see what it does. I thought it was a pretty good match. I guess from a distance it doesn't look too crazy, but... Uh-uh, this is looking a little bit more orange. I'm picking up a little bit more of the product. A little bit of this goes a long way, so you really don't need to put a ton of this on your skin. You can probably get away with a half a pump to like a three-quarter pump. You don't need a full pump at all. Oh, wow. Um, this is blending out pretty nicely for a full coverage foundation that's a matte foundation this is actually blending and spreading really nicely now that has to do with the brush as well because this is a very soft goat hair brush that blends product out really well but hmm let's see let's take an up close look at this i think the finish so far looks pretty good the coverage is medium. I wouldn't call this a full coverage. I don't feel like it covered any of my hyperpigmentation. And I even have some like lighter spots right here. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. So to me, a full coverage foundation would definitely at least conceal that part of my skin, right? So I'm not getting full coverage from this. And it definitely looks a little bit orange from my vantage point. And I don't know how I feel about that. Um, what I'm going to do is try to build up 
some more around my mouth and around that lighter area since it does say it's full coverage maybe we can build it up a little bit all right now i'm gonna need just a little bit more because i ended up using the majority of this i'm just getting a little touch of it and let's try to build it up right here oh my god this should have already covered that area if it was truly full coverage. Other foundations have no issue with that. So I'm surprised that this is having some trouble with really covering hyperpigmentation, like very light hyperpigmentation too, and even lighter spots considering that it's claiming full coverage. That is interesting. So far it feels, it actually feels lighter than the moisturizer on my skin. It does feel pretty lightweight. It doesn't feel heavy at all. So I do like that. Again, I liked how it spread across my skin. It didn't drag. And this color, it's orange. It is definitely orange and I am going to the store right now. I feel so crazy. All right, I'm going to have a mask on, so maybe that's not too bad. So it won't look too it's going to still look crazy. Okay. Here's the thing. Hmm. Should I try to swap this shade out because I am going to Sephora to do an exchange, so maybe I can get a different shade in this? What do you guys think? I don't know maybe I should try to get a different shade because this I'm telling you right now looking at you can see it I can see it in the viewfinder you can see how <laughs> orange I look stop why do I look so orange you know what I'm gonna let this sit on my skin and see if it does something different because <laughs> right now I'm looking like Trump like what am I doing with my life all right, let, let's let this sit for a bit to see like the final finish and I'll come back in like just a few minutes. Right now we are looking at, ooh, it is now 12.53, so almost one o'clock. I'm gonna let this sit until one o'clock and I'll come right back. Y'all, it is now one o'clock, okay? And I am so mad at this foundation color. What is this? I look like an Oompa Loompa. I am so orange right now and I can see it in the mirror in front of me and I can see it in the viewfinder so I know that you guys are seeing that I look hella orange right now I'm literally matching my shirt what is this okay this is definitely not a neutral shade this is not neutral at all this is very 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 warm this is orange I don't like it at all but the finish doesn't come to a flat matte at all it looks like a natural matte to me what do you guys think it looks like my skin it doesn't look dry at all and that may be due to the moisturizer as well like let's add that in but look it looks pretty nice the finish is beautiful i do like the finish the coverage is not full coverage for me this is more like a medium buildable coverage definitely not full so those two things we can definitely check off the list but i am going to see how this wears throughout the day but first let's do a transfer check so it says that it is transfer resistant which is key right now for those of us that are wearing masks we're going outside we don't want a product that's going to be transferring to our mask and this actually transferred a bit so you can see that there's definitely some transfer but all in all it's it's okay so we're gonna test it and see how it wears and I will do a check-in in natural daylight so you can see how orange I definitely look and I am probably gonna go to Sephora and exchange this shade for another shade because this is not okay and the magic cream light I don't like this I am gonna return this this is very expensive it's a hundred dollars what i got the 20 dollars off thing that welcome back sale but this doesn't feel i don't like how this feels at all on my skin it's too heavy it feels too greasy so i'm gonna return this and then get a different shade of this so we're gonna do check-in so one o'clock is where we're at now well it's a little after one but you get what i'm saying right i will see you guys in a bit y'all do you see my face right now look at look at how orange i you know what i am so mad right now i kind of want to cry because i have to go outside i gotta go in the store but i'm gonna put my mask on so i'm hoping that the mask camouflages 
the tragedy that is my current situation with this shade match. This is so freaking bad. It feels like it's gotten more orange. I, I, what the hell? Oh my God. But I mean, the finish looks okay. It looks, yeah, the finish, I don't mind at all. It looks fine, but this color? <laughs> I know y'all are laughing right now. Shut up. Y'all are terrible. Y'all are so mean to me. Would you laugh if you saw me in the street looking like this? Would you be like, look at this girl? Because it's about to happen to me right now. What a piece of embarrassment. <sighs> but here we go. I'm going to go inside Sephora right now, but I wanted to show you what this looks like. In natural daylight not that that's helping anything because the shade though but you can see like the finish on my skin so all right all right I'm just gonna listen I'm gonna I'm gonna go so fast I'm gonna move so quick it's gonna be ridiculous but <sighs> wish me luck guys I am back from the mall and it is what time is it now 407 so <sighs> we've had this on for a little over three hours now and when I tell you I felt so stupid out here in these streets looking orange as hell, but the mask did help a little bit because it covered up, like, it's covering up half my face. But, I mean, it's still, hmm, do I look extra orange? <laughs> Ciao! Whew. But, I mean, it's holding up pretty well. So, we're going to do a later check-in, but so far, I think three hours in outside in 80 plus degree heat. I guess it's like, what temperature is it? Wait, hold up. So I just checked and it's 85 degrees and the moisturizer has SPF in it. So it's going to make me look a little bit more glowy. This still is holding up pretty well, but I'm going to go ahead and do another check-in in a couple of hours just to see how it looks in my official camera and show you up close and all that stuff. But I wanted to do a quick check-in to say I'm still orange, but I did go ahead and get another shade. So we're gonna probably just try that on at the end of the video to see if there is a better shade match for me in case you are interested in trying this out. All right guys, so I am back and it is 6 p.m. So I've had this on for five hours now. I've been out and about. I ran some errands. I went to the store. I exchanged the shade because I need a new shade because this orange. <laughs> Did y'all see the check-ins? Child, what was I doing outside looking like an Oompa Loompa? I was like, no ma'am. So I did get a different shade of this. I got the shade 10 Cool because I feel like the neutral shades are gonna be way too warm and definitely if the neutral shades are that warm, then what's gonna happen with the actual warm shades? So I went with cool and I am not usually a cool undertone, but I've been like having to adjust lately. It's weird, like the foundation shades are just going all over the place. So, let's do this check-in close-up. So I'm definitely greasy, right? You see the grease. We expect this. I have oily skin. This is what happens. But to me, what determines if a foundation is doing well on my skin is whether or not it separates. So if I can see the pigment separating, definitely around my nose and in my forehead that I know it's it's not a foundation for me. All right, so looking at this up close, I looked at it in the magnifying mirror and I'm coming up close so you guys can see. Do you see the oils? Yes, but do you see any separation? No. There's no settling into lines. There's no separation of the pigment. My nose is especially greasy, but there's no separation. Like I can't see the foundation. I just look greasy. Even my smile lines? Mm -mm. everything looks good so for me this foundation is winning as far as holding up on my oily skin we are gonna go ahead and blot so this blotting is gonna tell us a lot about this foundation because it said it was waterproof and transfer proof and all that I'll tell you right now it's not transfer proof I have makeup all in my face mask that I wore outside so definitely not transfer proof I'm gonna wash that I wash my mask every day like every time I use it I wash it so we're gonna blot now right so I'm just grabbing handy dandy paper towel I don't need blotting sheets or anything special like I will literally grab some Dunkin Donuts napkins play with me but see there is definite transfer of the foundation and remember we didn't powder or anything so I can't blame it on the powder. This is definitely the foundation. And I am not swiping at my skin. I'm literally just pressing against my oils. Ooh, I just poked myself in the eye. Ow. 
So I'm just pressing against my skin to remove the excess oil and the foundation is picking up. All right, so transfer proof, we already disproved that. That is not true. Sweat proof, I don't sweat on my face. So, mm, but it did hold up to my oils, which is a good sign. So I might give it the sweat proof part. Humidity proof, maybe a little bit because I'm cooking right now and I'm like in the kitchen in the heat. And again, it's not breaking down or anything. Waterproof, I don't know. I, again, did not get wet. And transfer resistance, no, definitely not. The Magic Cream, I use the Magic Cream Light, which has SPF, and that I feel like added to the greasiness, if I'm honest, because child, that SPF was not letting me be great, but I needed to have SPF anyway because I was going outside. I mean, it was incidental sunlight exposure because I have tints on my car, like I'm not trying to get sun exposure, okay? And then I barely walk in the sun, like we don't play that. I don't think we need to do any further check-ins. The only thing that's gonna happen right now, just based on this check-in, is that I'm gonna get oily again and then I'm gonna need to blot and all that good stuff. But we saw that the foundation isn't separating in heat and humidity and sweat and oil and grease. It isn't separating, so that is a very good sign. It does transfer though, and it transfers a lot more than I would expect considering that it says it's transfer proof. Because the Too Faced foundation that I tried out the what is this one called the born this way matte this one says it's transfer proof too and when i blotted when i used this i got very very light pickup this it's almost like the whole foundation is trying to come off not, not like the whole foundation but yeah what i'm saying like a lot came off so this is definitely less transfer proof than the Too faced i would recommend the Too faced one over the charlotte tilbury and the Charlotte Tilbury one is more expensive. But it's not that I dislike this foundation because I do like the finish. I think it looks pretty nice. It feels pretty lightweight on the skin. No problem. It covers pretty decently, but it's not full coverage. So all the claims of it being matte and full coverage and all this stuff, it's not living up to all those claims. I'm quickly going to go ahead and test out the new shade that I got. So this is shade number 10, Cool, which is meant for tan skin with cool undertones. And this shade is... Is definitely more on the beige maybe even pinkish side it has a pink undertone and I don't know what's going on lately but some of the foundations that I've been matching with are on the cooler side because the neutral shades or the warm shades just lean way too orange or just way too warm on my skin I don't know what that is but okay let's zoom in a little bit because I think this match is much better even though initially I was like "Ooh, that's pink but I don't know if you can see it covers pretty well and blends in with my skin again with full coverage foundations I am a little bit hesitant when the shade match isn't exact because full coverage is just gonna look like a mask rather than blend in seamlessly with my skin but this is doing a pretty great job. And I'm applying this directly on freshly washed skin. So I didn't apply moisturizer or anything because I wanted to see the finish on plain skin because it has a matte finish. I want to see if it truly has a full on matte finish. So I'm going to go ahead and build this up. It actually takes a lot of foundation to build up and I am using a natural hair brush. So this is going to absorb some of the foundation, but I've used about two pumps now and my face still isn't fully covered so a little does not go a long way with this. I grabbed the sponge to see if I could get more coverage out of this rather than using a brush. I am not the biggest fan of a sponge. I just don't like how a sponge applies makeup. That's just me though. I know a lot of people love using a sponge to apply their makeup. You can get more coverage from a sponge, I feel, but some foundations actually go on more sheer with a sponge. With this one, I feel like I'm getting more coverage with the sponge than I was getting with the brush. The brush was absorbing a lot of product. So if you wanted full coverage, maybe use a synthetic brush or a sponge because this is definitely layering up much better than it was with the brush. 
but I do use a natural hair brush for my foundation. I feel like it just applies it more seamlessly and it blends in a lot better with my skin. All right, so here you have it and Let's see if you can tell that this is more of a cool undertone. When I look at it in the mirror, it looks fine. Looking in the viewfinder, it looks great as well. I think this is a much better match. And once I apply like bronzer and face powder and blush and all that, I think this will come together a lot better. Now the finish, whoo child. This is definitely more on the matte side, which I am not against actually. I really do like a more matte foundation. But if you have any dryness at all, any texture, this is gonna cling to it. I just went into one of my bathrooms which has the most unflattering lighting ever and I usually use that as my test to see if my foundation or my makeup just needs a little bit more tender loving care because that mirror will show me all my sins, okay? And this looked extremely dry and cakey in that mirror. Up close, it doesn't look like that when I'm looking in my magnifying mirror and in the viewfinder, it doesn't look that way. But if you have any kind of dryness at all, I have more oily combination skin, I would still have to go in with a moisturizer. I didn't go in with any moisturizer or hydrating essence because I really wanted to see the finish, the true finish of this foundation on bare skin. And it's definitely matte. It feel, ooh, yes, I love that. It doesn't feel tacky at all. It feels like a full on matte. This finish, I can rock with. I can definitely see myself wearing this over a very light moisturizer or even like a hydrating primer because I think it's gonna give a beautiful finish to the skin if I just have a little bit of extra moisture on. But right now, I'm loving the matte finish. For my oily skin, matte is where it's at. Now, I also wanted to give my feedback on the clinical testing that was done here to see if I have the same results. So it says here that 97% agree that skin feels cool after use. I don't feel any coolness. I didn't feel any coolness throughout application and blending. So I'm gonna say no. I am probably in that 3% that didn't feel that. Then 95% agree that pores look reduced. I didn't know because yeah, mm -mm, mm -mm. So I don't agree with that claim because my pores are actually a little bit accentuated. This did not minimize them. No, it didn't fill them in at all. And then it says after one hour, 216% of your moisture levels are gonna be boosted. I did not experience that the first go around and I'm definitely not experiencing that now. Obviously, I didn't have it on for a full hour yet, but still, you know what I mean? I, those claims, um, you can toss them out for me. I don't agree with any of those claims. So here you have the second shade match. And I think this one is definitely a better match for me. And it will look even better once I apply like all my other face makeup, powder, bronzer, blush, if I go in with highlight, you know what I mean? So yeah. And I want to mention that this is a fragranced formulation. I can smell it on my skin. I was smelling it on my brush. You can definitely smell the perfume in this. And fragrance is actually higher up in the ingredients list than I'm used to seeing. Usually fragrance is like the last or second to last ingredient. It's a little bit higher up here. And there is also limonene and citronellol in this formula as well. So keep that in mind in case you are opposed to fragrance. I don't mind a little bit of fragrance, but this one I can definitely smell on my skin and it's lingering. So all in all, I don't necessarily think this is like the best foundation. It's not a bad one though if you wanted to test it out. Should we try to set this with powder to see how it would look? Maybe we should do that as well just to give a final wrap up because if I was gonna wear this foundation like every day I would set it with powder maybe I will go in with it just on bare skin or skin that I hydrate with a lightweight moisturizer like a gel moisturizer or just one of my essences my Korean or Japanese essences that I use that's very lightweight they don't really add too much moisture to the skin yeah I think it looks good guys I like it I don't think it's the best foundation. The transfer resistance isn't there. It definitely isn't the easiest to color match 
The finish is nice and I think the wear is nice as well. It didn't separate so I know that I can blot and just refresh it throughout the day which is what I look for in a foundation. Not many foundations hold up to my oils, okay? And I'm fine with that because I don't want anything to like restrict my skin and like seal in all the oils because your natural oils do need to come through and if the foundation can kind of adapt to my oils and mesh with them, that's fine by me. So overall, I like this foundation. I would would give it a three out of five depending on what you're looking for this might be a go or a no so it's up to you what do you think $44 for this foundation isn't a high price it is what I would expect for Charlotte Tilbury I would prefer to see a foundation in the $30 range but I expect this kind of price point and if you can get a sale definitely get a sale but not bad. I definitely prefer this over the Magic Foundation for my kind of skin. I have oily skin so I want a more matte finish and I think this side is giving me a lot of hope. So hopefully this demonstration, wear test and all that good stuff helped you out to see if this is something you want to try out for yourself. I will leave some additional details down below in the description box about this foundation, the shade that I chose, the shade that I matched with, and also leave links on where you can pick them up. If there's an asterisk next to that link, that means it's an affiliate link, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through those links, which is a great way to show your support and appreciation because it gives me a small kickback and I can put that right back into the channel and keep bringing you content so if you use my links thank you so much I truly do appreciate it but if you're not comfortable using links like that that's fine just shop the way you normally shop no must no fuss I'm still appreciative of you watching my videos if you want to show some additional support thumbs up favorite subscribe share with your friends get the word out there all that good stuff I will leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where we are not PG, so be mindful of that. Keep that in mind. And until my next video, whew, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye, guys. Bye.